I was just procrastinating on, you know, trying to find a topic to, to make this video about. And um, it's funny, I got distracted by an interview with Jack White, the musician of, uh, he's in the White Stripes and uh, the Recontours and um, has also had a solo career. But anyways, I, I fell kind of down the miniature YouTube rabbit hole and uh, I found a really interesting interview with him um, from 2014, so a little ways back now. But the, the discussion was pretty wide ranging, but one of the things that he kept coming back to, which I had remembered, uh, from some of his earlier interviews as well, uh, was this idea of creative restriction. Um, and anybody that has talked to me or that I've talked to um, about creating and my, my lack of creative production, it always comes down to um, perfectionism, but also having too many options and not enough restriction and just being overwhelmed by the sheer amount of possibilities and it's funny he twice in this interview he actually says that he often goes into the studio with very clear restrictions on on what he will and he won't do and uh you know this is common throughout his entire career you see even in the um visual branding of the white stripes it's a very strict adherence to uh red white and black red, white, and black, everything. Album covers, clothes, everything on the set, the lighting is always red, white, and black. And he actually said that this came from his time as an apprentice upholsterer. And he found that, you know, when you're tacking the uh, fabric onto a couch, all you really need are three tacks in order to get something to, to stick. Um, and it kind of got him fascinated with this concept of, you know, what is the, the bare minimum required in order to accomplish what I want to accomplish? And I think that's so interesting. He even year, you know, he'd been creating music for 10 to 15 years. And he said that he finally bought studio gear, uh, his own studio gear uh, for his house. Before, he had never bought instruments, uh, or his own recording gear, rather, because he wanted to have that restriction of having to go to a studio and use whatever equipment they happened to have so that that would not be a consideration. It, it, it wouldn't have to be, you know, should I use this amplifier or that amplifier? Should I use, you know, this mixer or that mixer? Um, when should I record? Well, you know, if it's just at your home, you can kind of be lazy and you can say, well, I can do it tomorrow or oh, I can do it tonight. But when you take out time in a studio, you're on the gun. You know, we have a week to record this record. That's what we have. This is the equipment that they have in the recording studio. That's what we have. Let's go. Uh, let's just make it happen. And this actually rings true in my own experience. I remember when I was living in Arizona, um, I wanted to, to start writing again, just just kind of non nonfiction stuff, just uh, thought pieces about certain topics that I was interested in. And I decided to um, go over to a coffee shop every day after work, probably inadvisable. It was probably around 7, 7 p.m. when I would make my way over to the coffee shop and drink a cold brew. Uh, not best for the sleep schedule. But I remember setting um, a restriction for myself of, I don't remember exactly what it was, maybe no more than 800 words or no more than 1,000 words, which is enough to say something, but it's not enough to really go on forever. You know, it's it's a few paragraphs. And it's interesting, you know, it was limiting, but at the same time, <laughs> there, there really is freedom and limitation. Um, because when you're not limited at all, often you never start. But sometimes there is, there is comfort. There is comfort in, in limitation, and it allows you to, when you box yourself in a little bit, it kind of forces you to maximize and expand completely within that box. You're totally limited, but 
you think, well, I'm limited to this. I need to expand and use every possible option within this small box that I have set for myself. And, you know, sometimes I wonder if, the, if that's true even with major studio films. For example, you see that they have two or three hundred million dollar budgets, which is, you know, an obscene amount of money. You see the some of the movies that are made for um, a million or a couple million dollars, and they're phenomenal. The story is awesome. Maybe they don't have the most special effects, but maybe that's for the best. And so it makes you realize that, okay, well, they don't actually need that much money to produce a good movie, first of all. But second of all, a lot of times these movies are actually not that great. They're super expensive, but they're really kind of just kind of vapid and generic and a little bit lazy perhaps and they 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 lack that little bit of charm um they don't really feel like they're they're their own unique thing you know it kind of feels like we're trying to be what everybody thinks a big blockbuster movie is whatever that means um but they have no personal character and i just I wonder, you know, it just makes me wonder what some of these movies could have been like if perhaps they had a a restricted budget. Um, just very curious to think about. In relation to my own creativity, to close this, I don't know how I'm going to limit myself, but I, I just love that that Jack White said that, and he was so adamant. It just seems so. It's such a central part of his creative thinking is that thought of is, is that restrictive sensibility of just restriction, restriction, restriction. And, um, you know, if there's anybody in the music industry that is both very unique and creative and also prolific, he definitely fits the bill. And I wonder if it isn't in large part due to that is that he is just so free in restriction. So I'm going to see if I can do something to reincorporate that into my own creative endeavors. Jimmy walks over into my surprise. Sherry puts her arm around his side.